In many of my recent palette master element guide, I have recommended that you use relative as a black point for calibration rather than absolute. Let's find out together why. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. A few things I want to mention before we start this discussion is that the settings that I'm recommending in all the palette master element videos are great starting point and they are not arbitrary. Generally have run through a lot of testing on these settings on both Mac and PC to create these recommendations for you. For the most part, before you even receive a notification to update your palette master element, chances are I'm already running on the beta version of it to isolate any issues that may come up and also find the best settings to recommend to you guys. Secondly, the, these settings that I'm recommending are a really great starting point, but depending on your software and hardware combination and also the SW that you have, your setting may differ from mine. And if you find a better optimal setting, better than the one that I have recommended, that is fantastic. So you can always use settings other than the one that I recommend as well. And now let's get into our discussion about Blackpoint. I have BenQ SW270C here, and on this display, it has three hardware calibration slots, which I already have gone in and run the calibration on. So in calibration one, where we're on right now, this is panel native, absolute black. Calibration two, panel native, relative black. And calibration three, I've used this as a test slot between different RGB primary luminance point to see if that affects at all the black point using relative or absolute. And the answer to that question is that it doesn't affect anything at all. Black point on palette master element is pretty much independent of the RGB primary and also the luminance value. And I'll show you that later in this video too. Before we really get into showing and demoing why I choose these settings, I want to show you one more thing, and that is in System Preferences Display and in the Color tab. This is where we would choose the profile that's generated with Palette Master Element. As I mentioned right now, I am in Calibration Slot 1. This is Panel Native, Absolute Black. What I'm going to do now is choose the calibration or the profile that I made for Calibration Slot 2, which is Panel Native, Relative Black, and you will see that there's no change on the display at all when I switch these color profiles, as you see right now. What is this really telling us? Well, it's telling us that the ICC profile contains the gamut information, but because we're running this in panel native, there's no gamut change. So technically, there are no color changes at all whatsoever because all the adjustment is done at the display level. The other thing too is that I can also go in and show you another profile that was calibrated at 120 luminance relative, again, panel native, and you will see that there's no changes at all. This, however, if I choose a, for example, Adobe RGB primary that I've calibrated to or sRGB, you will see the color change on the display right away. So if you're going to experiment with this, the RGB primary has to be the same in order for you not to see a difference. Otherwise, it changes the gamut output on the ICC profile, which changes the way how the video card is rendering those colors within the certain gamut. And that's the reason why. And this proves that all the adjustment is done at the panel level. That being said, let's jump right into Palette Master Element here. And this is the screen under Display Setting. This is where you would go in and choose a different black point. So we have Absolute, generally that's going to be the default value. And we also have Relative, which is the one that I recommend you choose. And again, as I mentioned before, this black point selection is independent of the luminance and the RGB primary. Because I already have gone in and calibrate this display using different RGB primary, regardless of the RGB primary you choose, the black point will remain the same. If it's relative, it will show up the same way. If it's absolute, it will show up the exact same way. This is also the same thing with luminance too. I've also gone in and calibrate panel native relative at luminance level of 80 and 120 and the visual difference is not discernible at all. So going to change the luminance level doesn't really change the way how the display is really scaling that black point scale. The other thing to remember too is that the range of 80 to 120 is a rather small range. If you want to bring your display brighter, I'm sure you can see more of a difference. But at that point, your display is going to be much brighter in a print to which it diminishes the purpose of even calibrating the display to start out with. That said, let's talk about the shards that I use to test this display, and these are the shards that I use internally. So right now, we are on calibration slot 1, which is panel native, absolute black. Let's take a look at the white chart first. So this is what the chart looks like. Essentially, it's on 255, which is the background, all white, and then all these squares. 
they're pretty much one point down each different time. And as we come down these scales, you will start to see that you can discern more of the squares as we go through until like about 216 or so, because beyond this, it doesn't really make a difference anymore. At this point on the display, I'm able to make out a difference, I would say starting at like 253 or so. So 254, you can still see, it's really faint, it's hard to see, but you can kind of still see that. But I think more importantly is the black chart level, and this is the one that we're going to focus on. So this black chart uses the same principle as the white chart that I've showed you earlier. The background is zero, and as we go up, each different squares is one point up in the black scale so that you can see. And this is based on the 0 to 255 value. It doesn't really matter if you pull up this chart in Finder or if you pull this chart up in Photoshop, it will show up and render exactly the same way. In absolute black right now, I'm able to discern the black square maybe starting at around 10 or 11 or so. This pretty much means that the first 10 values, 0 to 9, it's pretty much non-distinguishable on this display. You may be able to tell a little bit of difference between 8 and 9, but it's really hard to see. So if you're working with a lot of dark images or you want to have a good black tone reproduction, I generally recommend calibrating and setting palette master element to relative. And this is the reason why. Because when we calibrate it to relative, I'll leave this to okay right now, I'm able to make out the different squares starting at around one. It's faint and hard to see, but two, three, four, it's fairly easy to see and make out the difference between those. So if you want to see a great black tone range, relative is going to be the way to go. These are charts that I use internally to run testing on the displays and also on the printers in my studio. However, I will provide these charts for you. I'll put a link to download them in the description below. Anyhow, I hope that you find this discussion about which black point to choose and the reason behind it helpful. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified when I upload cool new contents like this, and until next time, I just write.